Hello, in this video I am going to solve the following problem for you. The specific internal energy of a van der Waals gas is given by U equals to C sub V times T minus A over V plus a constant. Show that for a van der Waals gas, C sub P minus C sub V is obtained from this relation. Okay, now let us solve the problem. I want to use the first law of thermodynamics to solve this problem. So the first law of thermodynamics in differential form can be written as du equals to d prime of q minus d prime of w. Of course, you know that the reason that I put prime up there because dq and dw are not exact differentials. Okay, but let us assume that I have a quasi-static process. So in that case, d prime of w can be written as p times dv. So this becomes d prime q plus, sorry, minus p dv. And then from this equation, if I want to calculate d prime of q, it becomes du plus p dv. Now, if I consider u as a function of t and v, then du can be written as the partial derivative of u with respect to the temperature when the volume is kept constant dt plus partial derivative of u with respect to the volume when the temperature is kept constant dv but you know that this is just a definition of cv so this means that d uh, prime q is equal to instead of du I put this expression and this is CV and then I have two terms involved with DV. I factor a DV out and the final result will be CV DT plus P plus DU DV when T is constant times DV. And then what I want to uh, remind you again, this relation is completely generic. I haven't used the property of the van der Waals gas yet. So this is a completely generic calculation. But now I want to write this relation for a process in which the pressure is kept constant. If the pressure is kept constant by the definition of a specific uh, heat for constant pressure, d prime of q is Cp dt. This is the definition of C sub p. Okay. And in general, V is a function of uh, temperature and pressure. So in general, dV is equal to dV dt when the pressure is kept constant dt plus uh, v, dV dp when temperature is kept constant dp. So this is in general. But if I want to keep the pressure constant, so this means that dp is equal to zero, and then this means that dv is just simply partial derivative of v with respect to the temperature when the pressure is kept constant times dt. Okay, so now I go back to this equation, which is a generic equation. I consider a process in which the pressure is kept constant. In that case, d prime q can be replaced by cp dt. So I will have cp dt. On the right hand side, I have cv dt plus I copy and paste the content of the square brackets. But instead of dv, I can write partial derivative of v with respect to the temperature when the pressure is kept constant times dt. But this is valid for all t. In other words, you can divide it, both sides of this equation by dt, and then you move cv to the other side, so you get a very famous relation in thermodynamics. So, Cp minus Cv is equal to the pressure plus partial derivative of the energy with respect to the volume when the temperature is kept constant multiplied by the partial derivative of the volume with respect to the temperature when P is kept constant. So this is a generic formula in thermodynamics which is independent of the property of any gas that we are. So this is completely generic. Okay, but now we want to solve this problem. So I want to use this generic formula for the case of a van der Waals gas. Okay, so now for a van der Waals gas, I have to calculate this partial derivative and this partial derivative. To calculate this partial derivative, I need the energy equation, which is directly given to me in the problem. So you know that this combination for an ideal gas is zero. 
but for the van der Waals gas, this is the energy equation, so I have to use this. And then this is simple. I just need to differentiate u with respect to the volume when te temperature is kept constant. Okay, u naught is a constant, so its derivative is zero. T is supposed to be kept constant because of this index here, and Cv is given to be uh, is mentioned in the problem that can be considered constant. So the derivative of that one is also zero. So the only thing that I have to do is to differentiate this middle term with respect to the volume. And that's extremely simple. So if you differentiate it, you can compare it with 1 over x. The derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared. So the partial derivative of u with respect to the volume when the temperature is kept constant is nothing except a over v squared. Okay, it was very simple. So the only uh, lengthy calculation is related to calculating this partial derivative that I have to use the equation of a state of a van der Waals gas. And that equation, as you know, is P plus A over V squared V minus P equals to RT. Okay, so in principle, if I want to calculate this, the ideal scenario is to have V as a function of T and P and then simply differentiate uh, that function with respect to t if you keep p constant. But the problem is that if you open up the van der Waals gas, it becomes a, a third degree polynomial in v and it is not possible to express v as an explicit function of p and t. So this motivates us to find this partial derivative using implicit differentiation, implicit partial differentiation. Okay, so what should I do? I have to take the derivative of both sides. So I have to take the derivative of the left side with respect to T when the pressure is kept constant. So how should I write it for you? Something like this. And I have to do the same thing for the right hand side. Okay, so the right-hand side is extremely simple. That's a constant times t, and then you want to differentiate with respect to t, so the answer becomes simply r. But here, I want to differentiate this expression with respect to the temperature, assuming that v is a function of t and p, but here, in this case, I want to keep the pressure constant. So what I have to do, I have to visualize that this is the product of two functions of v, so I have to use the product rule, meaning that I differentiate the first one with respect to the temperature and multiply it by the second term itself, plus the first term itself multiplied by the derivative of the second one with respect to the temperature. So let us follow that. Okay, so the partial derivative of this expression with respect to the temperature when pressure is kept constant, so the pressure is kept constant, so this term is zero, and the derivative of a over v squared can be com compared to the derivative of one over x squared, which is very simple, so it becomes minus two a over v cubed. Why is that? Because the derivative of one over x squared is minus two over x cubed. So I'm using this relation here, but be careful here, this is differentiation with respect to volume, but I am supposed to differentiate with respect to the temperature. So by the chain rule, I have to multiply by the derivative of V with respect to T when the pressure is kept constant. So what I have written here is the derivative of the first uh, factor here with respect to the temperature when the pressure is kept constant, but I have to multiply it by the second term itself and then plus the first term itself, so I copy and paste the first term, multiplied by the derivative of the second term with respect to the temperature when the pressure is kept constant. So there's nothing except dv dt p constant because b is a constant here. And then the right hand side I will have r, then I'm looking for this expression. So I factor that expression out from the first one minus 2a times v minus b over v cubed is left and from the second one p plus a v squared is left and then what do i have i have uh, equals to oh, sorry i have to write that expression here so i factored this expression out on the right hand side i have simply r but you know that you are looking for this expression so this expression that you are looking for is r divided by that expression okay so 
partial derivative of v with respect to the temperature when pressure is constant is nothing except r divided by so if you don't mind let me write the second term first minus uh, 2a v minus b over v cubed okay now that everything is ready uh, i take let me also uh, yes i will take this one and replace it with this i will take this one and replace it with this and i principle in principle get my cp minus cv okay so cp minus cv becomes equal to p plus a over v squared so what i did this p is this p and instead of this expression i put this so so far i have that one and then multiplied by that expression but that expression is also this expression that you see here so let me just do that it becomes r over p plus a over v squared minus 2a v minus b divided by v cubed okay so now of course this is not wrong but that is not what is wanted in the problem so i have to do a little bit of algebra to reach to this exact expression that the book demands so this r i can put it here but then you see that i have a p plus a over squared here or a over v squared here and another one here i can use the equation of a state and calculate p plus a over v squared in terms of v and t so this expression is equal to rt divided by v minus b okay so i will do that i will move this r here and instead of p plus a over v squared here and there i can just simply put rt over v minus b that's it and then in one more step we will be done so this becomes rt over v minus b divided by rt over v minus b minus 2a v minus b over v cubed and the only thing that i need to do now is to rescale this fraction by the reciprocal of this fraction okay so i multiplied the numerator and the denominator by v minus b over rt then of course what happens the numerator becomes simply one i of course i have r here and the numerator becomes one the denominator becomes one minus 2av minus b squared divided by rtv cubed. Uh, sorry for the mess a little bit here. And that's exactly what we are supposed to reach at. Of course, for this problem, this equation was already derived in the book. So you really don't need to start from the beginning. You can start from this equation, which is a generic equation, and then do these calculations after that I done for this equation and you come up with this idea. But I wanted to actually go back a little bit to start from scratch completely using the first law of thermodynamics. Okay, so I hope that this video was useful for you. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye. Thank you.